The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time on Friday morning. We got 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and markets continuing the uptrend we had yesterday. S&P's right now up by almost a full percent trading at 37.16. You're 215 points above where you were yesterday, just almost at this time. If you recall, folks, CPI print for the month of September, and I'm sure you do, quite a reversal day yesterday, one for the history books. Um, I was seeing some st statistics last night in terms of overall turnaround, in terms of how far you were negative to how far you were positive, a top 10 day almost across the board in history, folks, on the types of turnarounds. Uh, top 10 day, don't see those days often. I'll see if I can find those statistics later. I think it was only four or five times it had been that big or something like that for the S&P NASDAQ 100. And guess what? Today, we continue the trend. We got retail sales this morning and we got bank earnings this morning. We'll get into those in a moment. NASDAQ 100, you're up by 1.1%. How about the NASDAQ 100, man? You are approaching now 700 points above where you were at the lows yesterday. And you're 300 points above where you were coming into the CPI print, let alone um, just getting back what you lost. The Dow, 30,000 408, almost 2,000 points, folks, above where you were trading at the lows. The Russell right now up by 1.3%. The Russell, talking about 115 points to the upside from 1640 to 1750 or that or thereabouts. Bitcoin climbing towards 20,000, almost made it overnight, not quite there, climbing up to that level yet again. We got crude down $1.46. Crude was higher overnight as well. We pull back a bit for crude. You jump over to the gold contract, gold. Now, take a look at these markets from what we just did in the S&Ps, right? S&Ps, you take back everything you did in terms of the markets, okay? Um, many of the different markets did that. Not the case with the currencies and gold. Gold was at 1685 coming into that number, made it all the way down to 1648. Boy, you're right near those numbers at 6 a.m. this morning. So gold, not really clawing back what you had going on there. We jumped to notes and bonds. They do get it all back, man. Uh, quite the reversal right now. You got the 10-year, right? Basically right back to where you were prior to that number. You spiked down almost two full points and you get it all back in the span of basically 24 hours. We have higher price and lower yield right back to where we were yesterday. But boy, when you talk about it, folks, uh, you're still talking about a yield right now. The 10-year, we're talking about 3.87%. Let's just jump down the line for the yield curve real quickly. So they were talking about in the den, they're talking about yield inversion, man. And yeah, you should pay attention, folks. The 210, we get the two-year right now at 4.4%. And we have the 10-year at 3.87%. That's talking about 52 basis points, folks, of inversion. That is quite an inversion. Uh, and that is pointing towards lower growth, which is why you have a decreased yield on a 10-year ter term basis versus the yield you'll get from a two-year basis. Keep your eye on that one because it is a spread that has been widening and it is a big one. All right, let's jump around to some of the banks. We'll kick off their earnings. We jump over. J.P. Morgan, some strong earnings out of J.P. Morgan. You spike to 113. You're back a bit. You're still up by about a dollar to 110. Boy, these banks charged higher yesterday ahead of their numbers. J.P. Morgan was at almost 100 yesterday. Now, we opened at about 102, but you see what I mean from this chart, climbing towards 100. And just like that, we're at 110 this morning for J.P. Morgan. we got Wells Fargo out with their numbers. They are higher this morning as well by about a buck 30. Uh, City with their numbers, they're higher a little bit as well. And I think we got Morgan Stanley, do I think we do? Morgan Stanley, actually, the lone one that's a little bit lower by about a dollar this morning. And let's jump over to some of the headlines. We're going to kick it off with retail sales, though. We get a lot of data, man. Retail sales stagnate as inflation rates hit consumers. Seven of the 13 retail categories decreased in September. Control group sales increased a larger than forecast 0.4%. That's the control group, though. But the value of overall retail sales little changed in the month of September. Excluding gas, retail sales were up 
one percent. The figures are not adjusted for inflation. And boy, when you look at the numbers, right? Change in retail sales, nominal. Okay, that is the bars on this chart. Okay, but the line, the black line in here, is cha change in sales minus gasoline and autos. Tough to deny that that is a declining number. We were looking for a 0.2 percent estimate. It comes in uh, whether you're talking about the overall or you're talking about excluding gasoline and autos, still just slightly zero to slightly flat. Seven of the 13 declined, including a drop in receipts at auto dealers, furniture, sporting goods stores, electronics merchants, electronics merchants, I'll say that again. Uh, electronics, there's supposed to be some great deals on computers. This holiday season, one of the areas that's supposed to be uh, discounted very heavily is computers out there. The value of sales at gas stations fell 1.4%, reflecting cheaper fuel prices, but they're now climbing. Now, this is going to be the interesting thing, man, and I've been talking about it, okay? So that's retail sales for the month of September. It is already October 14th, folks, already October 14th. We still have a month to go. Uh, excuse me. We still have over half the month to go. That's what I was going to say. But you take a look at crude on a daily basis, okay? We came into, now remember this, folks, okay? Because we came into October at about $80, man. Came into October at about $80. So you have seen rising prices so far for most of the month of October as we are up to $87.74. That's after pulling back from $93.64. You kicked off the month chopping around at about $80. I mean, what would have happened to prices, folks, if crude was not going down for a period of three plus months from $125, and that's not even cherry picking the high, okay? That's not saying from 130. That's just saying we have benefited greatly in terms of we should. Now, yesterday, okay, some of the CPI print in there, you know, you have gas prices down, but energy is still very high in terms of energy prices. But prices overall have been helped tremendously over a period of almost four months now. What happens if that trend reverses? There are so many variables in this market, folks, that could play out. Quite a relief rally yesterday. We're back above 3,700. Banks got good numbers, man. We're going to get into them after the break. Uh, JP Morgan beats across the board. Big numbers. I've seen the headlines earlier this morning waking up um, and after that, of course. But going through some of those numbers when they came out, just headline numbers, JP Morgan, big numbers. Let's jump over them. Why not? Since I'm teasing them. Record net interest income. Shouldn't be surprising, folks. Uh, they upped the guidance for the full year as profit tops estimates. Consumers, businesses remain healthy. Now, that's the same man that says he expects possibly a recession coming up maybe the second quarter of next year. $17.6 billion in third quarter net interest income. $17.6 billion in 90 days in net interest income. Uh, the money it earns on loans minus what it pays out for deposits. That is some interest, man. Expenses also came in lower than analysts were expecting, driving a profit beat. Yeah, they beat, man. Um, and he's talking about that, yeah, the central bank's benchmark rate We'll probably have to rise higher than the four to four and a half level many economists are predicting. I wouldn't be surprised there, folks. So they were marred by a, almost a billion dollar net investment securities loss. We'll talk about Wells Fargo in here. Yeah, check it out. This year's net interest income, excluding its markets business, $61.5 billion. We're going to talk a little bit more about the bank earnings, folks. We got Wells Fargo, Morgan Stanley, Citigroup. We'll talk about them. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P right now up by 32 points, trading at 37.14. NASDAQ up 105 points coming into a Friday after the volatility we had yesterday, man. Who knows where we're going to go on the open right now. We jumped to some of those banks, as I mentioned. J.P. Morgan, strong numbers, man. There was their charge higher yesterday. That's not even including the price action so far this morning. You're up by about a dollar. You were as high as 112 for J.P. Morgan. Back to the 15-minute chart. There's your volatility early this morning on their numbers. And jumping over to some of their numbers Real quick, the headline numbers in terms of what they made, earnings, 312 a share versus 288. And how about revenue? Taking in more than a billion dollars, more than almost 1.3 billion than what they were looking for, 33.49 billion, exceeding the 32.1 billion estimate, getting into things a little bit further, deeper into their numbers, back to the Bloomberg article I had pulled up there. Uh, they had suspended their buybacks in July in order to quickly meet higher capital requirements while maintaining flexibility to navigate a changing economic environment. Uh, yeah, and the firm had averaged about 2.2 billion of buybacks a quarter, and the firm now hopes to resume buybacks early next year. Now, it's interesting that, number one, they see the Fed going higher than the market maybe thinks, at least the possibility that they do. That would in increase the net interest income that they're able to achieve on some of those deposits, okay? But they also expect that they're going to have an economic slowdown. I say they as in their CEO is looking for a potential recession in the second quarter of next year. That's potentially when they're going to start with those buybacks again. Uh, interesting. That's a long way away, folks. We'll see how things play out until then. Non-interest expenses, $19.2 billion, slightly lower than when the market was looking for. You like to see lower expenses than what the market's looking for right now in so many firms. Uh, yeah, as they say, firm spending has been a key focus for investors this year. Uh, after executives predicted an 8.6% increase from 2021, costs are up 7% for the first nine months this year. So they're keeping it in line. Investment banking fees, 
Yeah, not happening this year, folks. Fell 47%, less than analysts expected. Uh, revenue from the business could fall by half as clients spooked by economic certainty. Uncertainty, stay on the sidelines. Uh, a bunch of numbers. They set aside $1.5 billion for potentially sour loans, more than the $1.2 the market was looking for. If you're a longer-term investor, man, you like the idea of these banks being well capitalized right now, okay? Because we don't know what's coming down the line next year, man. If anything, you would want to be well capitalized right now. They should run airlines like this, folks. Um, didn't even plan on going there, right? But they should run airlines like this. You should have a check on airlines like this because guess what? We can't function without banks and we can't function without airlines. So why not? You know, why not? They had their earnings this week. They are in big trouble, um, but they should be shoring up their balance sheet at a time when you need to be able to meander times of whether it's economic hardship or whether it's just like we saw in the pandemic or God forbid you ever see some type of war or whatever's going on with Russia right now. Uh, we need to bail out the airlines if they get into trouble because we need functioning airlines for an our economy to function just like we need banks banks obviously a little bit more integral than airlines but boy uh, across the board it's kind of the same when you think about the fact that we have to bail them out no matter what and we continue to so maybe airlines should have to do that right maybe airlines should have to uh, put some money on their balance sheet instead of handing it back to the shareholders and then coming to the taxpayers every time they get in trouble a little bit of a divergence there. Okay, let's jump around to what else we have going on. We'll jump to Morgan Stanley next. Pretty cool how we get all the banks on Friday to kick off the earnings season. Third quarter profit miss as investment banking revenue collapses 55%. Got to be a tough time to be an investment banker right now as the market collapses um, and that business just dries up. They miss by $300 million on revenue. Now, this is in light of, you just saw the J.P. Morgan numbers, man. Strong numbers in a big way. Now they're different businesses, okay? A buck forty-seven versus a buck forty-nine, and they miss on revenue by three hundred million. You see Morgan Stanley; they are a bit lower this morning. We'll jump back to their chart in the morning. Investment banking just plummeting more than fifty percent. Uh, investment man management revenue dropped twenty percent. I mean, it's below estimates across the board as well. Yeah, and jumping them back to Morgan Stanley. They are lower, and I think they're the lone bank that's lower this morning. So watch out for them, man, underperforming their peers to kick off the earnings season. We jump to Citi. Citi reports a 25% decline in third quarter profits, but tops revenue expectations. $18.51 in revenue. The market was looking for 18.25. Net income falling. Yeah, they don't have the comp in here. Let's say I was reading this before. A buck sixty-three. It's unclear if that is comparable to estimates. Not sure who's doing that or what's going on there. Uh, but nonetheless, the market likes the numbers because City, they were a little bit higher. Yeah, and they're holding on to those gains. They're up by about 50 cents as we come into the opening bell. And we jump to Wells Fargo. We'll finish it up. Wells Fargo, really trading higher, man. You're up by a buck seventy on Wells Fargo. We take a look at this thing on a three-year weekly. Back to the 50% of the entire move lower from 20 to 80.63. You back off almost to the 6180, and you make it to a low of 36.54. The 618 would have been 35.81. This morning, you're going to open at 43.73. Okay, let's jump around to some of the other stories we have going on. Beyond Meat, they are in the press with a couple stories this morning. So Beyond Meat, they're down about 10 pennies right now. Nothing too fantastic. When you look at their chart, there's some volatility for you, man. Now, maybe that was the news coming out that I'm talking. So they are cutting, folks. And... Um, they're cutting 19% of their workforce as sales and the stock struggles, as they put it. 19% or about 200 employees, the company said Friday. So what's that mean? They got about 1,000 employees? Yeah, and they're cutting 200 of them? It's a big number, man. You got 800 employees left at this company, that or thereabouts. Um, yeah, and that was so that, that story is out there. Let's see what time print they put on this thing. 8.51. It could have been out there at any time. I'm not sure what time that story hits. And then this story is out there for their, I think, COO? Operating chief. I believe so. COO. Uh, and he had quite a day for himself uh, at a college football game, I believe, with assault or something to that degree. I remember bringing this up saying, man, how do you do that when you're in that type of a position as a C-suite executive of a publicly traded company? So he's gone. Nonetheless, uh, they were getting rid of employees anyway. He's out the door. They'll probably get a new COO. But be careful of this equity, folks, because, man, it's so remarkable, folks, when you, you know, you got to listen to your intuition sometimes because 
you can be right. And it's a matter of whether you can wait long enough where the market kind of reverberates sometimes to find that price. And sometimes it, you can't do it, man. The market can go forever. You know, the, the meme stocks, right? They're, they're showing us that no matter what happens, man, markets tend to defi can defy logic for longer than you can withhold um, that position sometimes. But I say that, okay? Boy, this was an easy one, folks, when it was trading at 240 back here in July of 2019, man. I say easy, nothing's ever easy, folks. But I remember talking about it, being on the air with my dad. Uh, this company now has a market cap of about a billion dollars, just under that price point. Uh, so what were we pushing there? We were pushing, what, 15 times that number almost? So you're pushing $15 billion, $16 billion. And I remember talking about, man, I remember saying Tyson, okay? Tyson back then. Now, when, when did we just put that up there? As we come into this. That is July of 2019. Okay, and I remember Tyson, where's July of 2019? Okay, so Tyson was at about 82 bucks, a little bit higher than it's at right now. Tyson right now is valued at $23 billion. So maybe, Ty maybe Tyson was at $27, $28 billion. We're going to finish this conversation, folks, because it's important. Okay, because Tyson was valued at like $27 billion, and Beyond Meat was valued at like $16 billion. And there's no way that that one made sense in the long term. We'll be right back, folks. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Cobb Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P's right now, negative by twenty two points. Nasdaq one hundred negative by excuse me, negative. Listen to me, I'm too used to it. Positive by twenty five on the S and P, above thirty seven hundred. We've given back some of those gains. That's a fifteen minute chart. Uh, highs made just as I came onto the program at about nine o'clock at a price point of about thirty seven thirty three. And watch out. We just gave up 30 points just like that, folks, in the S&P since I've been on the program about 30 minutes ago. We open, you trade a hair lower, but all the market's still in the green. Crude down to buck 61 right now. You get the gold contract continuing to struggle, 16.60. Let's jump around to some of those currencies as we kick things off. You talk about some volatility, man. The dollar up to almost 114, back to 112.20, up a full dollar again, up a full point dollar, 113.20, back. I mean, just huge volatility. You put this thing on a daily basis, Right, just chopping around in the middle of the trend line right now on the dollar index. We jump over to the euro. Euro US dollar, again, just chopping around somewhere near the middle of that channel line, near the top portion of it. And look how this goes, folks. As time goes, this channel line getting further and further away from parity. We're at 97.5 right now. The pound US dollar, they got their own issue uh, going on over there. 112. 33 and the dollar yen they got their own issue in japan going on as well man you talk about a non-stop train coming at you folks we might see 148 in no time on that yen that's putting a hurting on the gold contract in a big way you could say that gold could be lower in a in in dramatic fashion it could be lower with the way that this yen has traded folks poof a three-year weekly we kick off 2021 at almost parity all right it's not parity it's like 100 for one it's not one to one in Japan in terms of a yen, but 100 to 1 nonetheless, and just like that, man, you're at 150. Just like that, you go from 115 up to 150 just this calendar year, and it is not stopping right now in the dollar yen. All right, jumping real back, uh, real quick, right back to Beyond Meat, because think about these types of scenarios, folks, all right? You got to go back a little bit further. There's Beyond Meat, and I remember having these conversations, okay, because I believe Tyson was a partner potentially with Beyond Meat. I forget what happened. Maybe they pulled out. Maybe they sold their investment prior to them going public, okay? But you have Beyond Meat right now at a price point of 15 bucks at about a billion dollar market cap. So at 240, you're talking about what, 15, 16 billion dollars? Call it 16 billion dollar market cap. This thing was pushing at the highs of 239.71 when things just got out of control, folks. Okay, like fake meat was going to take over the world or something. At least when, when you have a company like Zoom that does multiples or something like that, it makes some kind of sense because the world is transition transitioning to that type of a technology spectrum. But I don't think it's transitioning to fake meat just yet, man. And you were pushing 16 or 17 billion. And meanwhile, you had Tyson, right? Just the distribution network alone that a company like Tyson had, let alone the meat that they come that they distribute, and let alone that they were going to be in the same exact sector, folks. They are going to have a fake meat, okay? And you had Tyson at that time. Now, where just where were we again? Shame on me. Where were we? July of 2019, I believe, is that the price point? July of 2019, okay. And to go to July of 2019 for Tyson, okay, you were pushing $80 and you're at 66, so slightly ahead of where it's at right now. So you're pushing about 26 billion. So let's say Tyson had 26 billion and Beyond Meat had 16 or 17 billion. Which one would you want to buy, folks? I'm not even going to get into the numbers, okay? Their general sales, the profits of those two companies when they were pushing that number. Uh, video game style numbers, as our man Kevin Hinks says sometimes. Pay attention to that. And guess what? Tyson. Yeah, they're down. They're down from where you were right then, all right? You're down 15 bucks. You're down about 20% from where you were in 2019. That wasn't a recommendation to go buy Tyson, okay? Maybe that was just a recommendation, though, to look at the valuation of a company like Beyond Meat when even a company like Tyson was barely valued higher than a company like Beyond Meat. Meanwhile, they're going to be a competitor. There's no you know, holy grail of fake meat, folks. There's going to be a number of different kinds of it that are going to be out there. Uh, and yeah, so point being, you know, and, and what do we see? We see Beyond Meat collapse from $240 down to 15 bucks. And at least you can make the case that Peloton's got a plan, man. Okay, maybe Peloton does have a plan. You're still lower today, but Peloton, I saw some statistics saying the best seller out there for the Amazon early access sale was the Peloton bike. I actually saw it when I pulled up Amazon. I said, man, if I was in the market, maybe I'd buy that because it's a heck of a deal compared to where it was six months ago for Peloton. But at least they have a plan. OK, it seems like they're on their way to that plan. They're just going to be having somebody else make their bikes. They're going to be selling them through retailers like Amazon, et cetera. And then they're hopefully going to be signing people up for a recurring subscription. But beyond me, they're still cutting 200 employees, folks. They're cutting 20 percent of their workforce today trying to get things under control. And they have competitors coming up the line everywhere. Fake meats. There's going to be so many 
companies trying to create the next great fake meat, folks. So be careful of that one. Uh, and kind of a lesson, comparing those two companies, comparing the market caps of those two companies. We saw it happen a lot over the last few years, valuations getting out of control. Uh, but that one, I remember sticking out saying, hey, man, you know, Tyson, we're all familiar with Tyson, man. OK, they sell chicken, they sell everything and they got the distribution network in place. And meanwhile, you got an upper comer beyond meat that somehow is going to overtake them and be a more valuable company. Wasn't going to be the case, folks, uh, in the market. Yeah. All right. Speaking of food, let's jump to the big story out here in grocery, man. So Kroger, they are going to buy Albertsons for almost twenty five billion dollars. Yeah. Combined. They employ more than 700,000 people across 5,000 stores, man. Remarkable here. Uh, Kroger is the second largest grocer by market share just behind Walmart. Albertsons is the fourth after Costco. Together, they would be a closer second to Walmart. Still not up there, man. Walmart, they're a grocer. They're, they're, they're really becoming a grocer, man. Uh, and interesting in terms of where food is right now. Yeah, a challenging time is how CNBC puts it in the grocery industry as they've raced to keep up as shoppers embrace new ways of restocking the fridge. It's going to be interesting to see in terms of how they can compete here. The numbers for the two stores, Kroger's got 2,800, Albertson's got 2,200, 35 states to 34. Uh, and there's a number of banners that fall under each of them, folks, whether you're talking about Safeway, Acme, um, Fred Meyer, Ralph, some of those banners that they have in the namesake stores that they have and you got Kroger with the 33.3 billion Albertsons 15.2 and of course they scoop them up for almost 25 billion though out there yeah and it's interesting they talk about HEB in Texas I've heard of them never been to one they're they're a privately held regional grocer and Publix in Florida folks Publix we talked about I just got a man Jose from uh Lakeland giving us a call. Combined, Kroger, Kroger and Albertsons have almost 16% of the market. Okay, look at Walmart, right? Look at this, 21%. So even this combination is going to only bring them to 16. And you know what the kicker is of all of this, which is why I bring it up? Whole Foods, 1.3%, folks. Remember when? Remember when? Amazon bought Whole Foods, which was five plus years ago now. I just talked about it in my program. I think in the last couple months, it had been five years since Amazon had purchased Whole Foods and talking about, hey, it takes longer than you think sometimes for things to play out. Kroger on that news down about 3.8%, down a buck 79. Now, let's see if we can find out. We're going to go a little bit back further. Let's see. Maybe that was when Amazon stepped in. When would that be? Yeah, that would probably be it, man. When Kroger spiked from 30 bucks down to about 20 in the middle of 2017, just more than five years ago. And guess what? Since then, man, you go from 20 up to 70, you're at 43 bucks. And Whole Foods just controls 1.3% of the market. But you know what that means, folks? Amazon's got bigger plans for that. You know they do. Uh, and it just takes some time for those trends to really change in our lives. Market rebounds a bit. S&P's back up 38 points. We're up 1%. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be back in three minutes. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Well, apologies, folks. Welcome back. We got the S&Ps right now. Positive by 24 points, trading at 37.04. You give back some of the gains you had pre-market. You accelerate into a price point just above 37.30. We're back, as I said, about 30 points just like that. You were just as low as 36.96. I imagine it's going to be a volatile day, folks, uh, with where we were yesterday and where we come into today for sure. In terms of quite a turnaround yesterday, we're sitting at 3,700 right now. We were approaching a 3,400 handle yesterday. Things were looking a little bit dire after that CPI number. Okay, jumping around to some of the other stories I have pulled up. Give me as I pull this up. I got too many good stories up here right now, folks. That's what's going on. All right, so we talked about the banks. Yeah, Wells Fargo. So they have good numbers, and the the market really ne never cares about that one-off charge, right? As long as what it, not what have you done for me in the past, what are you doing for me in the future? Wells Fargo earnings marred by a $2 billion regulatory charge, but net interest income tops estimates as rate hikes help margins. This might be a turnaround day, turnaround two days for these banks, man, because you're seeing it. You're seeing J.P. Morgan talking about they're up 2.2%. You were as high as 115.24. Was that a real acceleration? It sure was. That was a real acceleration on a minute basis up to 115.24. You give almost all that back, though. This market's fading a bit right now. s and is under 3,700 right now. But it could be a turnaround, folks, because all the risk right now, in my opinion, is that the Fed has to go higher, right? There's not a lot of risk for the Fed backing off from the estimates of where that they need to end up. The conversation is now at least 75 points in November, and that meeting is just more than two weeks out, practically. Then we go to December, and then we go forward, so we're guaranteed to get 75, and the market was only basing in almost another 75. So we know we're getting 75. We might get a full 100 basis points out of the blue, depending on what kind of data we get up until November 2nd, potentially, okay, when the meeting, the next Fed meeting begins. So if 75 is already baked in, maybe even 100 could be out of the blue, a surprise to the upside for a hike, then that means that we only have 50 basis to 75 basis points more to go and I think there's a ton more upside risk if the market persists. I mean, you hear J.P. Morgan talking about it. Maybe they get to six. Well, with that in mind, you just saw what happens to these banks, folks. The net interest income is bonkers right now on these banks. Still, while putting away some reserves to make sure we're okay, you're getting quite a haircut from where we've been. Now, for some context, you back things up on a monthly. Okay. J.P. Morgan, from the years of 1994 until the years of... 2016 traded between 20 and 60 bucks and we're still almost double the price point of that is in but 
all things considered, folks, you're at a price point in J.P. Morgan that basically you were at in December of 2017 at 111. And I imagine, uh, especially if the banks have their ducks in order, and it seems like they do on the most occasion. Let's see how Morgan Stanley, which is the weakest this morning's trading. Yeah, a little bit of a different chart from Morgan Stanley, right? Check that one out in terms of where you are. Morgan Stanley, all it did is get back up. I mean, look at that, folks. Look at that chart. Morgan Stanley, 110 on the dot. And where do we get to? 109.73. God bless if someone was out there holding out for 110 from September of 2000 saying, you know what? I'm going to get it, man. I'm going to get it. And I got 27 cents more to break even. And guess what? Not so fast, man. Morgan Stanley selling off today off 3.1%. Pay attention to that. If I was going to buy any of them, this market's rolling over, man. If I was going to buy any of them, would not be buying Morgan Stanley right now. Um, for obvious reasons. You know, the trend seems like it's changed. We have higher net interest income coming into the banks. Morgan Stanley not going to benefit as greatly as some of the others. And you're seeing a little bit of a reversal of the trend. Meanwhile, you got Wells Fargo up 3% today. You got Citi up 1%. There's a different chart for you, Citi. Uh, let's see how Bank of America is. Bank of America up 8 tenths percent. They have their numbers? No, they do not have their numbers yet, I believe, for Bank of America. Uh, but Morgan Stanley down 3.5% today. JP Morgan up 2.6. Let's jump over to Amazon. Amazon shares flat. It claws back oh, basically the entire loss. Amazon was down more than 6% at one point yesterday. Pretty remarkable. Now, I'm going to jump around to a couple things. First, we had Thursday night football again last night. Now, I'm jumping around. Come on, let me find it quick enough. I saw one statistic here that Thursday night football catches a lot of heat, folks, for being the, the worst game on the slate, right? The NFL chooses the games on a weekly basis and then what happens is they assign which game gets the Thursday night game which game gets the Sunday night game which game gets the Monday night game Sunday night Monday night some of the biggest viewed events on television Sunday night football Monday night football Thursday night football not the case folks at all they usually put the weakest game out there and at one point last night I think they went into halftime I forget who it was even playing it was the commanders the Washington commanders and somebody else and at halftime, I think it was 0-0, and there was one statistic out there that out of 45 drives on Thursday night football, there was the last 45 drives on Thursday night football at one point last night, there was one touchdown. That goes back games and games, okay? Uh, but Bezos paid a billion dollars for the rights to air Thursday night football on the NFL. They started on week two, which had Kansas City and Mahomes, I believe, playing the Chargers. That three-hour period, for the first game that they had, now there's going to be nothing like that, folks, because those diehard NFL fans that need to watch Thursday night football, they all signed up on the first opportunity, right? Because it doesn't make sense you miss three, four, or five nights of football, and then um, in terms of weeks, and then you sign up. Those diehard fans were signing up right away. They had more prime signups in that three hour period than ever before in the history of their company offering prime. Okay? I don't know what that number is. It's Definitely not enough money to pay for a billion dollars a year for the rights to it. But boy, when you think about the possibilities for a company like that, folks, uh, especially a company like Amazon, a company like Netflix, where you literally just got to recoup the money that you pay for it in straight up subscription revenue. Now, interesting I bring that up because guess what? That's going to change because Netflix is now offering an ad supported service. I think they announced it yesterday for about $7 a month. You can get ad supported Netflix on a cheaper version. Okay. So that does change things. But Amazon, think about the data they have on consumers, folks. I talked about it before. I think I read in an article, they're charging about $500,000 for a 30 second ad within the program. So you got to sign up for prime for the privilege of getting served highly targeted ads direct to you within the Amazon platform, within the Amazon app, you can view it, right? Within the Amazon Prime TV app, guess what? They're gonna know exactly what you bought. They're gonna know exactly when you bought it. Think about some of these big consumer companies that Amazon so much business relies on, right? You can literally say, now I don't know if they're this targeted, but I bet they are, man, because they got a lot of brilliant people running Amazon. And if you're selling ads, can you imagine going to a company like Procter & Gamble and saying, hey, I can serve up your ads to people that have bought your product but have not bought it in the last two weeks or something like that. You know, show me somebody who has bought my detergent in the last six months but has not bought detergent at all in the last two months. 
I mean, there's the targeting possible to serve that up. I think it's a big winner. And streaming has changed forever, man. Thursday Night Football now only available on Amazon Prime. And there is nothing like live sports, folks, at all. Uh, Amazon, it's pulled back pretty dramatically. You talk about a pullback, man. You put this thing on a three-year weekly. You chopped around, you know, split adjusted from 150 to about 8, 180. And, boy, we've been struggling to hit about 110 this year, which, ironically, not ironically, uh, right back to the pre-COVID highs levels, 109.30. Amazon just chopping around at pre-COVID levels. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. We got the NASDAQ 100, now negative. S&P is positive by 7. We'll talk about earnings coming up next week. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now, positive by just three points. NASDAQ 100 rolls over completely in the red. You see the give back. And yeah, we're positive by four, folks. But as I said, these are just five-minute bars. We came into the program at about 37.30. So you give up a quick 45 S&P points. There's your NASDAQ 100. You drop about 200 points easy to 11,050. We're right back to where we were almost before that CPI number across the board right now on the NASDAQ 100. S&Ps, not quite the same, right? Look where we are. We're still a solid 50 points points above where we're at coming into that number. The, the Dow holds on to gains 30,241. We jump over to the dollar index. 
Quite a move across the board, man. There's about 910. You just traded up almost a full point since I was on the air. You're coming into the pre-market highs of 113.20 right now on the dollar. You take a look at the 10-year, just mammoth moves, man. Just mammoth moves. Uh, keep those fingers quick this morning, folks. The volatility is not going away anytime soon. We just had the 10-year trade down 17 ticks since I've been on the air. And 17 ticks, man, you take a look at it right now. We're talking about a 10-year yield as we are climbing right back to 3.94%. I think we're at 3.87, something like that, to kick off the program on the 10-year uh, higher yield coming at you, folks. You jump over to the two-year, all right? Now, not as large of a move on the two-year right now, to say the least, but moves everywhere. And let's look again as we wrap up this program, folks. We'll take a look at that yield curve one more time real quick. When we kicked off the program, what were we at? About 52 basis points. Let's see where we're at right now. You get the two-year right now pushing 4.42, we'll call it. Yeah, so tightening up a bit as you have uh, the 10-year rising, right? So that's what we need, folks. We need the Either the 10-year, the, the longer-term yields to rise, or we need the shorter-term yields to pull back, right? Because right now, the market's saying the Fed's going to hike, so short-term rates are going higher. And the reason why they're going to hike is because the economy's in trouble, so long-term rates go lower. When you start seeing those longer-term rates maybe potentially rising, and maybe you get a pullback as we start to peak on the Fed cycle, you get the short-term rates pull back. Okay, keep your eye out for that one. But right now, we got quite a spread in the two-year and the 10-year. Thanks so much for starting your trading day with me, folks. Stay tuned. Should be a wild one. Our man, Basil Chapman, he is up next with the Tiger Technician's Hour. Thanks so much, folks. Have a great Friday.